I, I want to talk about Antarctica. Mm -hmm. They are clearly protecting or preserving something that may or may not be under three miles of ice. There's undoubtedly a time when, when Antarctica was, was lush and green. The question is, was it lush and green during the lifetime of the human species? Yes. And this is where, this is where it gets tricky. Imagine embarking on an expedition to the frozen, remote expanses of Antarctica, only to uncover secrets of a lost civilization that might have thrived there in ancient times. This fascinating theory suggests that parts of a sophisticated ancient civilization could have existed on what is now the icy continent of Antarctica. This idea is tied to the hypothesis of Earth crust displacement. Whereby, from time to time, the entire outer crust of the Earth, like the skin of an orange, might shift, leaving the core of the Earth in place. Indicating that Antarctica wasn't always positioned at the South Pole, but might have enjoyed a more temperate climate long ago, making it hospitable for human life. However, this theory is not without its controversies. Does it happen at all is the, fir is the right. first question. I mean, of, of, of all the, the theories I've looked at and supported, this is the one that I've come in for the, for the most criticism for. The concept of such dramatic geographical shifts is viewed by the scientific community as highly speculative and lacking in solid geological evidence. The current understanding of plate tectonics does not support the possibility of the Earth's crust moving so drastically and quickly to reposition an entire continent from a temperate zone to the South Pole. But the theory delves deeper than just geography. It explores global myths, legends and religious texts, interpreting them as potential clues to the existence of this ancient civilization. Tales of great floods and cataclysms found in these stories are not seen as mere fiction, but as allegorical records of real events that led to the downfall of this advanced society. The most important issue to me uh, is the issue of a global cataclysm at the end of the Ice Age. It is hypothesized that a major disaster, such as a flood or comet impact, could have been the cause of this civilization's disappearance from historical records, with survivors possibly dispersing around the globe and spreading their advanced knowledge to other emerging cultures. Of course, the most important are the flooded continental shelves. The sea level rose 400 feet at the end of the last ice age. Let's be clear, this was a rise that was extended over a period of 11 or 12,000 years. It did not rise 400 feet overnight. This leads to another intriguing aspect of the theory, the influence of this lost civilization on later societies. It is believed that the remnants of this ancient society played a significant role in shaping the development of well-known ancient cultures, such as the Egyptians and Sumerians. Similarities in architectural structures and astronomical alignments across different ancient sites are cited as evidence of a shared origin of knowledge. This suggests that these early civilizations might have inherited advanced architectural techniques, astronomical insights, and possibly other lost technologies and wisdom from their predecessors. The discovery of the technique to do longitudes that actually show the world as it looks during the last ice age suggests that somebody during the last ice age was mapping the world. Imagine a world where an advanced civilization flourished tens of thousands of years ago, long before the Sumerians of Mesopotamia marked what we consider the dawn of civilization around 6,000 years ago. This bold claim challenges the conventional timeline of history, suggesting that this sophisticated society existed during the last ice age or even earlier, presenting a significant puzzle for mainstream historical narratives that typically view complex societies and state-level civilizations as relatively recent developments. The evidence pointed to is as fascinating as it is controversial. It highlights the architectural marvels of megalithic structures like Gobekli Tepe in Turkey, the iconic Stonehenge in England, and the majestic pyramids of Egypt and Mesoamerica, one of the many ways that Gobekli Tepe, I think, is going to prove to be a game changer is it's going to require us to reconsider uh, our whole dating sequence on megalithic sites around the world. These ancient constructs are not just stone monuments, but testimonies to an advanced knowledge of architecture, engineering and astronomy. Precise astronomical alignments of these structures, such as the alignment of the Great Pyramids with Orion's Belt or the solstices and equinoxes at Stonehenge, underscore a sophisticated understanding of the heavens. This expertise suggests that the people who built these monuments had a deep comprehension of celestial bodies, seasons and cycles. 
The theory extends beyond monumental architecture. It proposes that this civilization possessed advanced navigational skills, which could explain how similar architectural styles and astronomical knowledge appeared across vast distances, transcending oceans and continents. The scale, precision, and complexity of these megalithic structures indicate technological and engineering skills far beyond what has traditionally been attributed to prehistoric societies. Furthermore, the alignment of ancient monuments with astronomical phenomena hints at a comprehensive grasp of astronomy, deeply integrated into their cultural and religious practices. Evidence of sophisticated urban planning evident in the ruins of ancient cities suggests advanced societal organization and knowledge of city building. The global spread of similar architectural and astronomical insights among disparate ancient cultures indicates a shared source of advanced knowledge. This could have been disseminated by survivors of this prehistoric society, whose legacy might be the foundation upon which later civilizations built their own achievements. Journey back to the Eocene epoch and you'd discover Antarctica vastly different from the icy, remote continent familiar to us today. This fascinating period reveals a past where Antarctica wasn't engulfed in ice but was bustling with life. During the Eocene, Antarctica occupied the same position over the South Pole as it does currently. Yet the global climate was substantially warmer, enabling the continent to support a climate far removed from the frozen desert we recognize now. There was a lush rainforest that is now covered in miles of ice. Yeah, that, that's probably true. The Earth's climate was very different from, from how it is today. This era marked a time of significant change, with continental drift following the breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea. As part of the Gondwana fragment, Antarctica was gradually moving to its present isolated position, while continents like Australia and South America began to drift away, modifying ocean currents and climatic conditions. A notable difference from today's Antarctica was the absence of the vast ice sheet that currently covers the continent. The Eocene's elevated global temperatures meant Antarctica was devoid of this extensive ice cover, which had profound implications for the planet's climate. The lack of ice's high albedo effect, which reflects solar radiation, resulted in an even warmer Earth's climate. The tectonic activity during the Eocene was crucial in reshaping our world. The breakup of Gondwana persisted, and the formation of the Drake Passage between Antarctica and South America began to physically isolate the continent. This isolation marked a critical juncture in Antarctica's climatic history. Another significant development was the formation of the Antarctic Circumpolar Current towards the end of the Eocene, or at the beginning of the Oligocene. As the world's largest ocean current encircling Antarctica, the ACC played a vital role in the thermal isolation of the continent. By circulating cold water, it established a climatic barrier that kept warmer waters at bay, leading to the cooling and eventual glaciation of Antarctica. Fossil evidence breathes life into the Eocene Antarctica, with forests of beaches, conifers and ferns indicating a much warmer and more humid climate than today's icy conditions. These fossils, including those of plants and pollen, demonstrate that the continent once supported a diverse range of flora and fauna. Sea levels during the Eocene were significantly higher due to the absence of large ice caps and the warmer global temperatures. This resulted in different coastal configurations, with areas now above water being submerged at that time. The elevated sea levels and warmer temperatures fostered a rich and diverse marine ecosystem, distinct from the current Antarctic marine life. Thus, when we contemplate Antarctica today, it's essential to remember that this icy continent once experienced a vastly different past, one that was warmer, brimming with life, and played a pivotal role in Earth's geological and climatic history. The Eocene Epoch, a captivating chapter in Earth's history characterized by dramatic climatic shifts and significant transformations in life on our planet. This period, stretching from about 56 to 34 million years ago, is nestled within the Paleogene period of the Cenozoic Era, famously known as the Age of Mammals. This era marked the flourishing of mammals, taking the stage after the dinosaurs exited at the end of the Cretaceous period. The Eocene sits between the Paleocene and the Oligocene epochs, with each phase documenting crucial geological, climatic, and biological shifts. Tectonic plates were on the move towards their current positions, influencing the oceans and sculpting the climate in profound ways. 
A notable event of this epoch was the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum, which occurred around 56 million years ago. Imagine Earth undergoing a sudden temperature surge, with temperatures increasing by 5 to 8 degrees Celsius in just a few thousand years, likely due to a massive release of methane from oceanic methane clathrates. This event significantly impacted ecosystems, leading to the extinction of some species while triggering rapid evolution and diversification in others, especially among mammals. During the Eocene, the atmosphere was laden with CO2, with levels ranging between 1,000 to 2,000 parts per million, far exceeding the pre-industrial levels of about 280 ppm. High CO2 levels, driven by volcanic activity, the combustion of organic matter and the declining efficiency of carbon sinks, enveloped the Earth in a greenhouse climate. This led to rising temperatures, altering weather patterns and ocean currents, and crafting a world vastly different from our own. The Eocene's warmer conditions had significant effects on marine life. Temperature changes affected marine currents, altering species distribution and fostering the development of new ecosystems. It was a period of change, new beginnings and dramatic shifts that laid the groundwork for the planet's future. The Eocene epoch, with its stories of warming, shifting and evolving, serves as a reminder of the dynamic and ever-changing nature of Earth.